I've moved on. The United Methodist Church is now a contradictory name. Churches are leaving in mass. We are anything but united. The name itself is now a ridicule. Move on. So the first question before us is, will we rebuild our denomination? Or will we have the courage to create a new one? I strongly encourage the latter strategy. And today, I will tell you why. Stick around, and let's create a new church together on Coffee with Coach. My name is Steve Petty, and I have three goals for these videos to help you become a better church leader, to save you time and money, to help educate, energize, and motivate you to energize and motivate your church. In 1908, Henry Ford introduced the first Model T. It changed the world. A few short years later, it dominated the industry. At one point, 54% of the cars sold in the world were Model Ts. It made Henry Ford an icon, the second American billionaire after Rockefeller. Though there were incremental changes over its 19-year production, Ford refused to change the basic design of the car. Losing market share to more advanced and attractive cars from GM until the Model T was almost irrelevant in the industry. When Ford decided to change the Model A, the company had lost so much momentum it took years to recover. Since John Wesley established the rules for Methodism, we have made some incremental changes to the church, but the essential framework of the United Methodist Church was designed in the 18th century. Even though we know without a doubt that what we have been doing is no longer working, we have not dared to change much in 240 years. Now we have the opportunity. Now we're going to create a new denomination. We're going to let the old people leave and we're going to create something new. So today I want to share with you three ideas I have for this new church. First, what must we do to prepare to change? Second, what must change immediately? And third, what must change to start moving us forward? So today, what must we do to prepare to change? Get rid of those people in the global Methodist church separate as quickly as possible. Drawing out the process is like curing disease by bleeding the patient or using leeches. We are not going to solve anything by clinging to that denomination, clinging to the money, clinging to those old buildings. Let them go. Make it easy for them to leave. Don't be punitive. Just let them go. If there are loans on the property, agree how those will be paid. If there are liens against the property, work out a payment plan. If their pension obligations need to be paid, negotiate something in full. Any past due bills, apportionments should be paid, but leave it open to negotiation as these will be hard to negotiate. Let them go. Let them go as quickly and as effortlessly as you can. Continuing to fight this will only prolong the damage, will only weaken the patient, and will keep us from creating the new church we need to create. Let them go. Let the denomination die. We are no longer the United Methodist Church. Get over it. Second, what must change immediately? We have to start a new church. We could go back, try to recreate the old one. We could cling to our old name, the United Methodist Church, but that's a ridicule. People will remember what the United Methodist Church was and what it isn't. I've got a name for you. You're not going to like it, but think about it. I like the Open Methodist Church. The Open Methodist Church. Think about it. We invested lots of money in open hearts, minds, and doors. Let's reclaim that and put it out front. Let the global church be the closed Methodist Church. We can be the Open Methodist Church. Then we can proclaim who we are with pride and joy. We are open. If you're a human being, you are welcome. Come from different status groups, different age groups, different gender groups, different races, different political backgrounds. We don't care. If you can get in the door, you're welcome. If you can't get in the door, we'll come to you. We're open to all ways of doing it. 
We're open to all people. Why? Because we believe God created y'all. Everybody who is a child of God is welcome. We don't pass judgments on anybody. We love them because we're all sinners. That includes us who are in the church and you who are coming to it, all sinners. Proclaim who we are, the open Methodist Church, with pride and joy. Second, hiring a marketing team. Boy, that's going to be important. We have a huge marketing problem in front of us. We have been this church that's been fighting and wrangling and we've been losing people because of it. Hire a marketing team to help us think that through. Look at the population. What do they want? What can we be? How do we do that? Raise money for an advertising campaign. And then help local churches learn how to advertise this new denomination and their connection to it. Give them the help they need to get that advertising done, to market themselves in their community so that people know that old church down the street, it's a whole new church. It may look old, but it's new. And look at the new things they're doing. And look at the new things they're proclaiming. Be a new church. And then train our leadership to embrace those new attitudes so we aren't defensive or negative about it. Proclaim them and accept them. Be bold about it. Third, what must change to start us moving forward? Well, we have to build a better Methodist church. Recognize that even without the current conflict, we were failing badly. We've been losing numbers since the 50s. Really, we have. Go back and check your, your data. We don't need to rebuild the old church. We don't need to rebuild the 1950s church. We don't need to rebuild the 1930s church. We don't need to rebuild the 1784 church. We need a new church for 2025. And it's going to take us three years to create it. So that's why I use that number. So here's some ideas for you. Think about these and you'll come up with some of your own. I invite you to add those in your comments. And when you subscribe down below, make sure to add those comments and tell me what you think we should be doing. But here are a few from me. One, stop one-year appointments. We know these kill churches. Anything less than five years is detrimental. You lose so much momentum every time you shift, and 10% of the people leave just because they love the old pastor, even though the old pastor might have been terrible. So if you keep changing pastors every three to four years, you're still losing numbers, and you're losing momentum, and you're losing energy. We can't do that. Second thing, term limits on bishops. Eight years max. We keep electing bishops for life. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's not. I think it's a bad thing. I think it sends the wrong message. We've been doing it for hundreds of years. Maybe it's time to move on. Next, require superintendents to have served at least 10 years and two appointments to be eligible. Next, do more to encourage missional clusters of like churches. We haven't really done much with this. I know some conferences have, with some luck. Other conferences just have given up on it. Now that we've been through the pandemic and everybody is meeting on Zoom, we can create clusters of like-minded, like-sized, like geographical churches who are hundreds of miles apart, but they can meet periodically in Zoom meetings and share their experiences. This would be great for those churches. Next, make more effective use of retired clergy to coach new pastors. I've been doing this since I retired, and I really wish more pastors would take this up. In fact, I think about my own early days in the ministry, and I think, boy, it would have been valuable for me to have somebody that I could have called up and say, I got this situation. What should I do with this? And have somebody who is older and wiser tell me, oh, you're about to make a bad mistake. Let's think this through. And help to show me a better way to do things. Next, develop better leadership development tools for pastors and churches. I've harped on this before, but we elevate people. We send people to larger churches and we don't train them at all on how to lead that size of a church. If they get a move, 
This is great. They'll be prepared. If they don't get a move, well, they actually know how to grow their church into that size. So there's some ideas for you for this week. Next week, I'm going to talk about building a new fabric of the Open Methodist Church. Everything we build has a fabric to it. How do we want to weave the fabric for this new Open Methodist Church? I've got some ideas, and I'll share them with you next week on Coffee with Coach. If you want to know when that video drops, you can subscribe down below, click the little bell, and you'll get a notification. If you've got comments, if you've got ideas for me, send those to me. You can email me at steve at revstevep.com, or you can comment on the links below. All of these show up on LinkedIn, they're on Facebook, and they're on YouTube. You can find me all over the place. Find it, comment, and if you care about the denomination, share these videos with somebody who also is wrestling with what should we do next. Let's get this idea out there. It's time to start new. Share the video. Get it out there. That's it for today. If you find these videos helpful, please, as I said, subscribe to my channel and share these videos with other people. And I'll see you next week. Bye.